NBC University of the Air presents We Came This Way, a new historical series for our listeners at home and overseas. With Clifton Utley as the narrator, we present Chapter 17, a story of the Carbonari in We Came This Way. Time, 1820. The thunderclap of the French Revolution still echoes throughout Europe. The vision of liberty and justice it evoked has not entirely faded in spite of a Corsican corporal who betrayed it and became an emperor. In spite of a prince who in 1820 is the real power in Europe, Prince Metternich of Austria. 1820. The corporal's empire has collapsed and the victorious powers have met at the Congress of Vienna and redivided Europe, swearing at the same time at all costs, to prevent the resumption and resurrection of all liberal movements on the continent. Toward this end, we powers will strike. The clock of progress has been turned back. In Italy, for instance, many little kingdoms live in the shadow of the Colossus of the North, Austria. The little kings have their power, but for the people, there is oppression, violence, and corruption. Liberals are the hunted outcasts of dictatorships. This, then, was the seedbed of the Carbonari. In 1820, Italy swarms with them. Freedom and justice are their banners, especially in the kingdom of Naples, where Ferdinand, a supporter of the Bourbons, is king. Stop fussing, for heaven's sake. My pen needs sharpening, sire. Well, sharpen it. Sharpen it. Let's get on with this letter. I am ready now, sire. Very well. Then write to Prince Metternich in Vienna. My dear Prince, perhaps you will think me unduly alarmed here in Naples. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I wish assurance of Austria's pledge of 1815 regarding aid in the event of a popular uprising. Uh -huh. I confess I have no particulars upon which to base this request, except that my kingdom is restless. There is a secret society here of a disturbing nature. Carbonari, they call themselves. Carbonari, they call themselves. In the event of a popular uprising, can I count on Austrian aid to... Yes? His Lordship, the Prince of Canosa, sir. Send him in. You took a pretty time arriving here, my dear prince. Forgive me, sire. My duties as your minister of police. And what of my duties as the king? I am sorry, sire. What news have you for me? Not very much, sire. What? My spies have nothing definite. Well, what in heaven's name do your spies do, then? Sit in the wine houses, in the cafes, making eyes at the women? Your majesty, I... You know as well as I there's something brewing in the city. The commonary flourish like leaves on a vine. They are very clever, sire. I expect you to be more clever. Haven't you spies enough? I, sire, only... You have police? You have troops? Aye, but the houses are not on my side, sire. Houses? What do you mean, houses? They will not speak, sire. They will not tap a passing police officer on the shoulder and say, your pardon, senor, but the leaders of that secret society you're looking for are in my upstairs room. <laughs> your wit does you no credit. I am sorry, sire. I can fill the fortress of San Leo with dozens of liberals, but it is the leaders we want. We cannot tell them as one can tell an Englishman from an Arab. My men and I are doing our best to reach them. You have no single clue? No hint who are the heads of these carbonari? I have a name. Where? Only a name. I do not know what the man looks like. I am sure of only one thing. He comes from Lombardy in the north. Lombardy, huh? And his name is... Antonio Orbani. What will you have, senor? A glass of sour wine, my friend. Oh. Ah, you're from the north, Lombardy. Am I? <laughs> Forgive my bad manner, senor, but the accent. I know such things. They are like labels on wine bottles. I'm quite sharp that way. Oh, you said uh, sour wine, senor? Yes, please. A Im glass. Yes, immediately, senor, immediately. 
Pardon, senor, but uh, do you mind if I share your table? On the contrary, I shall be pleased. It is a fine day, senor. Blue as the northern sky. Clear as the southern air. Will you have a cigar, senor? Thank you. A match? I am De Rosa. I am Antonio Arboni. I've been waiting here for hours. The cigars are a very special brand, you know. I should be grateful if you would tell me where to get them in Naples. Certainly. In fact, I shall lead you to them myself, senor. Ah, your wine, senor. Uh, my friend will also have a glass. Uh, certainly. Senor. Yes? Do not look now, senor. But there is a man a few tables behind who asked me questions about you. Uh, no, do not turn. I shall wipe your table. Well? A waiter learns the smell of police spies, senor. That man has the smell. Thank you, my friend. We'd better go. No. They only what you would normally, senor. It would look much better. Thank you for everything, my friend. Come. He's also got enough. The waiter was right. He'll follow us. Aye, but not for long. We'll lose him easily in the square. A tall man with a beard. He went through here only a minute ago. Oh, sorry. Am I a policeman? There were two of them. You must have seen them. Are you a policeman? Yes, yes. You'd better tell me. I have not seen any man such as you describe. Well, what do you want? My lord, I think I saw the man, that liberal. What liberal? The one you ordered us to watch for. Will you talk sense, man? The Lombard, my lord. The Lombard? Aye, my lord. He's a tall, fair man with a beard. Wears good clothes. What is he? I, I don't know, my lord. I, I couldn't help it, my lord. There was a crowd in front of the cathedral on the square. You mean to say you let him get away? I did my best, my lord. I swear by my mother. I, I did, but they vanished into thin air. If I had four sets of eyes, my lord, I couldn't have watched him closer, but the, the crowd... You idiot! Caprilla! Caprilla! You call, my lord? I want patrols. Dozens of them. I want every house south of the square searched. Understand? <laughs> That patrol's gone by, DeRosa. Then let us get on with the meeting. Turn on the lamp. Right. Well. Arboni was speaking. As I said, brothers, in Milan, in Turin, in Bologna, in Ravenna, our carbonari are eager to strike. There is hunger in Milan. There are Austrians in Turin. Freedom and personal liberty are known, my brothers. A man leads a watched life, as if he were on parole. Yes, that's it. The entire North is on parole. The jailer and judge is Metternich of Vienna, and he is acting in the name of the oppressors of Europe. <laughs> An ancient profession, honored by royalty from time out of memory. <laughs> Let him finish, Pepe. There is only one answer, and that is liberty. Mm -hmm. A constitution for the people. Give them a voice in the management of their lives. Then they can rid themselves of the Austrian barbarians. Right. You uh, have a plan in Lombardy? Aye, Brother Pepe. We Carbonari have a plan. Also in Piedmont and Amelia. The simple uprising. Uprising. Well, I'm a military man. I can understand that better than meetings. But uh, we do not wish to strike in the north alone. We want all of Italy to burst into flame when the time comes. We want the Carbonari of Naples to strike with us. That is why I am here. To ask you if you will act. We have not completed any plans, Arboni. How strong are you? Strong enough, I think. I command the militia, my friend. Really? Mm hmm. They are behind me to a man. What about arms? Also enough. But we are not planned, Arboni, because of the army. We know there are discontented regiments amongst them. We want them on our side. And leave Ferdinand only with his palace guard. When will you know if those regiments will support you? In a few days or a week. When we are sure of them, then you can tell your carbonari in the north that we are ready. Listen. A patrol. Turn out the lamp. I hope they pass this house again. Who are they looking for, anyway? They are looking for me. Somebody! Touch this house. It is our house at time. Quick, the back way up, Bonnie. Where shall we be able to find you? Look for me in the cafe. I shall be there every evening. And I shall be shaved. 
Report of Police Chief Gambrilla to His Lordship, the Prince of Ganosha, my lord. Last night, our patrols scoured the area south of the cathedral thoroughly and failed to find any trace of the man we are looking for. Search is still going on. I hope to have something for my lord shortly. What would you have, senor? A glass of wine. Uh... Is something wrong? Ah, oh, my manner, senor. But, but, but uh, have I not seen you somewhere before? Perhaps, my friend. Perhaps. The devil. The Lombard. You shaved your beard. Aye. But is it safe, senor? I mean, coming here is none of my business, of course. Uh, but... Do you smell any police spies, my friend? Heaven forbid, senor. The air is clear and sweet-smelling now. But if the senor comes again, that corner table would be better. So, you've lost this Arbani completely. Oh, I'm sure he is still in Naples, sire. No doubt to give you a second chance to get him. If you will but have patience, sire. Oh, of course. I forgot. Patience by all means. I shall sit as quiet as a church mouse, my dear prince. While these madmen plan a revolution under my feet. Sire. Listen to me, my dear prince of Canosa. I am the ruler of this kingdom. I own it. It is not something I picked up on the streets and am holding until somebody claims it. My spies are working day and night. Spies are not enough. I have assigned extra police. Still not enough. Spies must work alone. And the police, hampered by the figment of legality they must uphold. What would you have me do then, sire? Fight fire with fire. What, sire? We will build our own secret society, my dear prince. A society dedicated to one purpose. The spread of terror. Do I see a light begin to dawn in your eyes? Yes, sire. It will be a society that will fight in these liberals away from action. It will be ruthless and efficient and independent of the state. I will let them loose in the streets and they will hunt down constitutionalists like dogs. Where will you get members for it, sire? Are you naive? From the waterfronts, of course. From the cellars and the dives. From the wine houses, from the rat holes and the foul alleys. If need be, from the jails. There's where the recruits will come from. The royal treasury will pay them, sire. How do they live now? Why, by robbery and murder. Well, then, my dear prince... Under the protection of the police, they should be even better. From the dregs of society, King Ferdinand recruited men for his Calderari bands, and he loosed them onto the streets of Naples. Like hunting dogs, they terrorized the city, seeking constitutionalists, liberals of all shades. They were the hound packs of reaction. By beatings, by assassination, and by torture, they attempted to smash the Carbonari movement for a free Italy. Oh, and this is for Article 2 of that Constitution you want. Oh, Article 3. Oh, 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 will you talk instead? Oh, oh, oh. Who are the leaders? Pick up. I, I don't know. Where is Antonio Arboni? I don't know. In that case, in your revolutionist, we pass Article 3. Meanwhile, the Carbonari leadership met and planned. The army regiments were gladly theirs, and they prepared a message for the Carbonari of the North. On such and such a day, they wrote, we, the Carbonari of Naples, will rise, and, and we, we will strike, strike with a will and a determination towards the iron. iron. And we will not lay down our arms until liberty and a constitution is won, or we are dead. O oh, brothers of the North, in Piedmont and Lombardy, let our blow be the signal for all of Italy against tyranny, against the oppression of the Austrian barbarians, for freedom and dignity, for the rights of man, Carbonari of Italy, arise! And now it was necessary to get the message north. Will it be a glass of wine again, senor? First, my friend, the air. How does it smell? Like mountain air, senor. There are no police spies about. 
Then, my friend, a glass of sour wine. Immediately, senor. Antonio. Eh? Oh, De Rosa, sit down. Put this newspaper in your pocket, Antonio. There's a message in it to the north. Take care of it. Names, dates, places. In the wrong hands, it could be disastrous. I'll take care. When do you leave? Tonight. How? Like any respectable merchant, my friend. By coach. It is a dangerous chance, Antonio. I'll get through. Let us... Uh, your wine, senor. Senor. Calderari band is in the street, senor. They may stop here. Let us get out. Gently, my friend. Rise and bid me a casual farewell. Aren't you coming? Yes, but it's best we separate. Go. Oh, good evening, senor. Go. I am. Uh, goodbye, my friend. Hey, all you wine-swilling fat bourgeoisie. Clear out! Senor, please. You heard the waiter. Get up! You are in no hurry, are you? I am surprised, that is all. You are stubborn. Your manners need a polishing. I'll scrub them till they shine like a lira. <laughs> <laughs> you wear good clothes. Got gold in your pocket? Turn them upside down and shake them. <laughs> <laughs> Time for that later. Who are you? I am a secret society. Are you for the good King Ferdinand? You are not the police. I asked you a question, senor. Are you for the good king? Well... I am for God and justice. Ah, you sound like a Lombard. What is your name? Is it Orboni? I saw him running across the square, Pepe, with all those murderous dogs after him. I followed Pepe, followed as best I could. Orboni ran past the cathedral into the dark streets behind it, and they were yelling and shouting all the time, Stop him, that's Antonio Orboni. Stop him in the king's name. Shouting as if the very walls and cobbles would recognize the name and leap upon him. What happened? I don't know, Pepe. They disappeared after him. I went that way, too. It got quiet after a while. At the end of one of the streets... There was a woman with a shawl wrapped around her head. She was sitting on the steps of her home and she was crying. She was bleeding from a cut on her face. I don't know, Pepe, but somehow I felt that she knew. Did she? They had struck her, Pepe. I went up to her. Senor, I said, that man they were chasing, did you see what happened? She shook her head. Yes, yes, that poor man, bleeding when they dragged him out of the house. That poor man, she kept saying, that poor man. I... I'm so tired, Pepe. So they got Orboni. That's what she said, Pepe. And the plans for the uprising with him? Maybe they never got them, Pepe. Yeah, maybe he had a chance to destroy them. He said he'd taken care of them. But how can we be sure? Ferdinand's police minister may already have them. We must do something, Pepe. Uh, we must. We must either run away or... Or what? Or the Carbonari must rise at once. <laughs> Called me, sire. Yes. I understand you have the Sorboni. Aye, sire. We have him. Splendid. Then you have your clue to the Carbonari leaders. I apologize, my dear prince, for being gruff at times. I did not mind it, sire. I understood. So tell me, who are the leaders? I do not know, sire. What did you say? I have not found out who the Carbonari leaders are, sire. But good heavens, man. You've got the Sorboni, haven't you? He will not speak, sire. What nonsense is this? Since when did that stop you from forcing him to speak? Or does your stomach turn or at once over the idea? No, sire, it does not, only... Only what? Speak up, man. Orbani is dead. Dead? Aye, sire. He hanged himself from the bars of his dungeon window. <laughs> Guglielmo Pepe is not an orator. You all know that. Give me a company of militia and I'm far more eloquent. I'm not one for resounding phrases. Liberty, justice are all, to me, simple things. Either a man has them or he's better off dead. We Carbonari want life, not death. We're willing to fight for it. I think the time to fight has come. 
We do not know whether the police know who we are. Each moment now counts twice as much. Either we act immediately, or we may never act at all. I say to arms. I say let the blow for liberty be struck. I say rise. Brothers, will you march with me? And in the early morning hours of July 1st, 1820, the signal went out. Rise. Gather your arms, citizens. Rise. From house to house it went. Tomorrow, for Italy and freedom. Heavy called, gathered Avellino, be armed for Italy and freedom. Tomorrow, brothers, if it's liberty you want, be at Avellino in the dawn. And in the dawn, 12,000 men gathered in the town of Avellino outside Naples. Two regiments of Ferdinand's troops were with them, and in the bright sun, once again, Guglielmo Pepe spoke. He stood upon a wagon, and in his hand a sword glittered like a running fire. Carbonari brothers, at last we are in the open. Dead are the secret actions, meetings in dark rooms. We have come up from the darkness of conspiracy into the broad daylight of open action. We are now an army of freedom in an oppressed land. At last, brothers. Our banners can and will be seen. This morning, this morning an ultimatum was sent to King Ferdinand. We demand a constitution in Naples. We demand that all citizens imprisoned because of liberal sympathies be instantly freed. We have insisted that an answer be sent to us by nightfall. If not, we will march. These are our demands, sire. They will be considered, Signor de Rosa. By nightfall? Yes, by nightfall. We will call upon you this evening, then, sire. Good day. Good day. Prince. Yes, sire. Call the Austrian ambassador. At once, sire. Count Jablonowski, the king will see you now. Count Jablonowski? Let us be realistic, sire. You have no army. You could not possibly put down this rebellion. But what of Austria's pledge in the Congress of Vienna? It is not only my country that's jeopardized. This thing can spread like wildfire through the rest of Europe. Yes, even to Austria. Austria will respect her pledges. We stand firmly against this democratic poison. Let them have their constitution, Your Majesty. They shan't have it for long. Then... Austria will give me troops. I can safely say, Your Majesty, that you will have 50,000 Austrian grenadiers. That's better. And sure of Austrian support, the king willingly acceded to the Carbonari demand. And the next morning in the square, the king's herald proclaimed... My beloved subjects in the realm, I, King Ferdinand, upon this day of our Lord, July 5, 1820, do hereby of my own free will accede to the desire of my people and grant them, as of this day, a constitution. I pledge adherence and defense of said constitution and command immediate preparations for the formation of a parliament in the kingdom of Naples. And in January, when the snow covered the Alps, when the northern rivers were sw stiff with ice, 50,000 Austrian grenadiers crossed the Po and moved on Naples. In March, they reached the frontiers of the kingdom of Naples. And then they smashed the forces under Guglielmo Pepe. King Ferdinand abolished the new constitution and began the punishment of all the liberals he could find. Never mind the blindfold. Very well. Would you like... No. No, I'll stand. Forgive us. We only do our duty. I forgive you. It is a pity your death must be so pointless. Pointless? No man's death who dies for freedom was ever pointless. 
Ready? Aim. Fire! Yes, the defeat of the people is only a temporary defeat. The Carbonari pointed the way. They cleared the road that led to Giuseppe Garibaldi. And the road that led to Garibaldi is the road that led to us. In the democratic world we live, defeats as well as victories built the walls and towers. The story of the Carbonari is part of our heritage. Yes, we came this way. The NBC University of the Air has brought you Chapter 17 of the new historical series, We Came This Way. Tonight's script was written by Raphael Hayes and produced under the direction of Albert Cruz. Original music was composed by Dr. Roy Shield and conducted by Joseph Galicchio. Clifton Utley was the narrator. In the cast were Mr. William Everett as King Ferdinand, Mr. Murray Forbes as the Prince of Canosa, Mr. Williams Herbert as Urboni, Mr. Michael Romano as DeRosa, and Mr. Ralph Camargo as Pepe. Others in the cast were Mr. Charles Eggleston and Mr. Claire Baum. The handbook containing background information with suggestions for further reading is now in publication. We shall be happy to send you this valuable We Came This Way handbook, especially written for the current series. Send 25 cents to cover the cost of printing and mailing to We Came This Way, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. Next week, we present the Second French Republic. This series is presented each week as a public service of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated station. This is the National Broadcasting Company.